you know, I was so used to seeing like the Lou Albanos and the Freddie Blassies and the Grand Wizards and these over the top guys. Uh, even JJ would, you know, very, very stoic, but would get in there and take the elbow and do the, 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 the wobble on the ropes and everything. And Gary was just standing there. <laughs> Another fun fact is uh, an angle uh, with Terry Funk went, it went according to plan, but the censors were very upset when he tried to suffocate Flair with a plastic bag, which yeah. drew many complaints from viewers, and apparently Gary Hart, of all people, accepted responsibility for coming up with the idea. Um, because it's, I know it's obviously been very, very Terry heavy. It's a Terry Funk tribute show, but yeah. I thought we'd just uh, divert slightly because Gary Hart was at, uh, involved at the time as uh, Terry's manager of the JTEX Corporation, which is just such a weird mishmash of people from yeah. Terry Funk, Dick Slater, the Great Mooter, Dragon Master, who was uh, the Japanese version of Kendo Nagasaki, not the British version, and Buzz Sawyer. But yeah. having said that, any any memories, any stories about Gary Hart? Yeah, uh, Gary was uh, always reading, you know, very well-read guy, very quiet. Um, you know, if you heard Gary say five words in a night, it, it was rare. Um, and it was really like one of the things about his character that like, for me, uh, was sort of mundane, you know, like uh, unless he, like, he'd he be standing by the post almost like, you know, frozen there. Very rarely move away from that Uh and I, and I think something in that quiet subtlety is, is what made that work as much as it did, the way it did. Uh, you know, I was so used to seeing like the Lou Albanos and the Freddie Blassies and the Grand Wizards and these over the top guys. Uh, even JJ would, you know, very, very stoic, but would get in there and take the elbow and do the, 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 the wobble on the ropes and everything. And Gary was just standing there. Uh, but he also, and I would later learn this, I didn't know it at the time. Uh, was one of those guys that was quietly in the dressing room helping with the booking, you know, and disseminating stuff in the, in the booking. Um, you know, there's a lot of those minds and, you know, over the years I've met, I've met so many of them and worked for so many of them. Uh, and the personality differences, you know, Kevin Sullivan, uh, very unlike the character he plays on, on camera, uh, very astute to the business. Uh, Gary, very quiet, uh, you know, dusty, obviously, knowledgeable and 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 more boisterous more outgoing uh bill watts the bully um you know the, all these different personalities but from each one of them you learned a little something more and i occasionally would have talks with gary very brief you know like you would talk to gary and ask him hey what do you think of this spot or whatever and it would be like four or five word answer you know and then you have to go sit down and like what's he mean by that you know you're like you have to run it through your head there's because there, you knew there had to be something more of an inner meaning to it um I think for Gary, if, if I may add this, uh, the business of if we've been talking about like from Terry and, and so many others had started making this transition from what it had been, you know, black boots and tights to, and we're, you know, by the mid eighties, we're seeing the rock and wrestling connection and you're seeing, you know, ring music and then, you know, the flamboyancy of the business, you know, taking off. Uh, Gary was a relic from a bygone era. And in that black boots and black tights era, that's what a manager did. And, uh, but I, I think more for Gary's uh, point of view, he was so much more relevant than just that guy standing stoically at ringside because he was quietly, you know, uh, generating stuff into the dressing room. And I and I think Gary knew, like you know, there, you know some people have the character to be uh, and the personality to pull off that, you know, that brash, loud mouth, you know, over the top. Uh, and Gary was just sort of like that guy that, you know, sort of like the 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 tortoise in the hare, right? Like you know, it's. Yeah, he would just slowly get there somewhere and 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 maintained relevance through a lot of that. For us young kids in the dressing rooms, it's like he seemed like a peg that didn't fit mm -hmm. um, at, at that point in wrestling. But you know, again, at the, with time and a little bit of wisdom, hopefully, you look back and say, what a, you know, a lot of contributions that Gary had made. With Gary as well, I'll throw this in. You tell me if you think I'm right or wrong. Is he was different to all the other managers because you know your Bobby Heens, your Jimmy Hart's, and all that kind of thing. Is that you'd eventually get them in the ring and they were just they were great big cowards. They talked a big game. But they couldn't match up to any of the wrestlers, of course, uh, unless it was Salvatore yeah. Palomo, who Bobby Heenan beat once. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> with, with, with Gary, he looked more threatening than the majority of people he was managing. Yeah. Which yeah, I, don't, looked, I don't know if that's like reversed an odd bit of psychology because you're too drawn to the manager. 
in that sense, but he was tall, he was menacing looking, he had size. Yeah. So he was a wrestler at one point as well, of course. Hmm. Yeah. And, and he had a bit of a look of a, you know, a psycho mass murderer, right? Yeah. Like it's that blank sort of stare, and, and, you know, and I don't want to suggest that he was just like frozen in the pool. That was a majority of the time. But in those relevant points in the match, you would see something very Toja Yamamoto-ish where he would, uh, you know, uh, you know, he'd start to move towards the guy and, and they go, ah, you know, get the crowd reacting. And, you know, uh, you know, for me as a performer, looking at that and thinking, boy, you know, how hard you have to work to get in a reaction like that. And, you know, Gary knew that all he had, there was so much more tension to the feigning it, then it would have been to choke the guy for five minutes or whatever, right? He just had to feign it. It's it's sort of like the you know, the old black and white Dracula movies. You know, you you see you know, the fangs are right there, and they cut to the shadow on the wall, and your brain starts filling it in. And with Gary, the same thing. You know, he just has subtle uh, subtle brilliance in, in wrestling. 